It's the end of an era as we say goodbye to my longtime co-host of Lake Area Beat, Ron Hawkins. We'll share some of our favorite memories over the years and what he'll miss most about his time on the show. We'll also introduce the new White Bear Lake Fire Chief and tell you how to stay healthy and safe this winter in your home and on the ice. I'm Tracy Minarchek. Welcome to Lake Area Beat. As we mentioned a couple of months ago, Ron Hawkins retired from the White Bear Lake Fire Department and took a job with Woodbury's Fire and EMS. We knew our time with him was limited, but it's still hard to say goodbye. In an effort to find a new co-host, we held auditions, but as we quickly discovered, there's something about Ron that makes him irreplaceable. Take a look. of Lake, Lake Area Beat, uh, we'll be speaking with Police Chief What Billy Swan. is your problem? We have done this like 10 times Pro now. Okay, here's the deal. I don't have a problem. I'm a big deal. So if there's a problem here, it will be you. Here's, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to read my lines, and I'm going to read your lines. Got it? Next. As co-hosts, we need to banter with one another between takes. You know... Like, talk back and forth, talk about how our summer is going, you know, what's your favorite? Hello? Are you awake? Are you even alive? Coming, Coming up on this edition of Lake Area Beat, two White Bear Lake female police officers keep getting mistaken for one another, and they can't figure out why. Uh, that was my line. No, I think it was my line. Uh, wait, was that for Heidi or for Tracy? Is that my line or yours? Who are you? Who am I? Uh, well, I know I'm not you and you're not me, so... Ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. On this edition of Lake Area Beat... Uh, on this edition of Lake Area Beat. Well, this is where you would read your line. So, okay, I think that's going well, right? What the f are you talking about? Is this the best you could do? Oh, well, I think that you definitely had chemistry. Uh, hold on, let me check. You're I joking, some, right? No, Will no. you do it with this? Now I we do both just get the f out of here. Okay, both well, of you. that's lunch. Okay. Well, also meet Compo Donation. Donating. Their time to help thank police officers. Good job. Really, Ron? Is this how far you'll go? It's not Ron, <laughs> it's Veronica. <laughs> oh, 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 sweet, loyal, and lovable Ron. <laughs> well, you can't blame me for trying, can you? I, I will tell you this, Ron. We've had a good thing going. You know, you're right. We sure have, Tracy. Too bad you're leaving. Yes, too bad, Tracy. <laughs> 
none of those people made the cut, but we did find his replacement, and I'd like to introduce him. Please welcome my new co-host and White Bear Lake Fire Chief, Greg Peterson. Chief Peterson, welcome. Thank you. And tell us a little bit about yourself. Normally we have people on and we say, tell us you know, where you came from, sure. a little history about yourself. Sure, I, I started in the fire service, fire, <laughs> I started in the fire service back in 1988 with the Falcon Heights Fire Department. And I spent about almost nine years there. Uh, and then after that, I moved uh, to the Roseau Fire Department and I spent 20 years there. And I just completed 20 years with the Rosa Fire Department uh, as a battalion chief. I served in a number of roles at each of those departments. And then I uh, was offered the job and accepted the job at, as the chief of the White Bear Lake Fire Department. So I'm and happy to be here. You've been here for a few months. How long have I you have. been on the job? Almost three months now. Almost three months. Yeah. And how do you like it so far? I like it. Good. I'm glad to be here. It's a good and thing. Um, you've watched the show before? I have. And so you know we do a lot of quirky things sometimes. Yep. Are you game for that? I'm game for that. And being outside? <laughs> yeah, yeah Maybe. it's a lovely day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice day. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take a short break. But first, here's some advice for keeping your car on the road this winter. It may be the most wonderful time of the year, except when it means driving on ice and snow-covered roads. I'm Sergeant John Vetti with a couple of tips to keep your car from crashing this winter. Most people think of themselves as good drivers, but not everyone is. If conditions are bad, don't drive unless you have to. The key to preventing an accident is to slow down. Let me say that again, slow down. Starting and stopping takes longer on icy roads. Remember the three to four second following distance rule? That should be increased to eight to 10 seconds. Know your brakes and keep the heel of your foot on the floor and use the ball of your foot to apply firm, steady pressure on the brake pedal. In addition, avoid driving if you're tired. Make sure your tires are properly inflated and don't use cruise control. It's obviously cold in the winter and people like to warm their cars ahead of time. Please don't warm them up in an enclosed area such as a garage, and don't leave them unattended. Believe me, cars do get stolen. And if you slide or lose control of your car and hit a parked car, either attempt to find the owner, call police, or leave a note on their windshield. If you leave, you can be charged with a misdemeanor hit and run, and that may include fines, jail time, and license suspension. We want you to get to where you're going safely, use caution, take your time, and of course, wear your seatbelt. I'm John Vetti, we'll see you next time. Welcome back. We're out at Ramsey County Beach today where the annual Barely Open fundraising event for the White Bear Lake Food Shelf takes place every February. And in a few weeks, thousands of plungers will brave the frigid waters to raise money for Special Olympics of Minnesota. And Chief Peterson, it'll be your first year there. It will be. All right, and you'll be cheering us on? I will be cheering you on. Good. But not everyone who goes into the water during the winter wants to. According to the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, 16 people have died in the last five years in Minnesota as a result of falling through the ice. One of them was a two-year-old boy. White Bear Lake Assistant Fire Chief Ryan Kunst will tell us the guidelines for ice as well as carbon monoxide dangers in preparing your home for winter. Assistant Chief Kunst, thank you so much for being here. We're out here next to the water that's kind of Indeed. frozen and let's talk about going out on the ice and and what kind of things that we nope. need to know about that before we go out onto the ice because yes. we've had a lot of people go through the ice already we have a lot of fatalities too yep it's scary yeah um the chief had mentioned the department of natural resources as a reference to use and they uh they've issued some guidelines they say anywhere from zero to four inches of ice you shouldn't be on it at all uh four inches of ice is about the minimum to support just a person walking out to go fishing with maybe a bucket um, five to seven inches is what they say if you want to bring a snowmobile or a four-wheeler or maybe a, a heavier uh, ice house on there, but certainly nothing permanent. Um, they'll say anywhere from eight to 12 inches for a passenger car and then 15 to 17 inches worth of snow or worth of ice, excuse me, for a pickup truck. Okay. But now that is good clear ice, which is the strongest ice. And clear ice, I would think, oh my gosh, I'm going to fall through because I can see it. Yes. I want the nice cloudy ice. Yes, and that, uh, yeah, yeah and that right. is, yes, that's the weaker of the two. Yep. Okay, so no cloudy ice, that's Correct. bad. Correct, yep. Okay, and talk a little bit about the um, ice fishing houses. You mentioned 
the amount of ice needed, but there's some dangers yep. with ice houses. Naturally, in Minnesota, we like to be warm when it's cold out, so it's uh, pretty normal for us to bring heaters into the ice house. Uh, if it's going to be a propane heater, or really anything that uses a flame, it's of course going to emit carbon monoxide. So it's a good uh, good idea to a have carbon monoxide detectors in your home. In fact, it's required by law. But you should also have them in your in your uh, ice fishing house. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Just to just to safeguard while you're in there. That's right. Can you a tell lot of people us a little bit about. About more about the carbon monoxide? Yeah. Like what people should walk, look out for? So carbon monoxide, they'll always refer to it as kind of the invisible killer. It's odorless. It's tasteless. It's colorless. It's a it's a product of incomplete combustion, is what they'll say. So naturally, it's going to come from anything that has an open flame. Uh, the concerns that we'll see for someone that's experiencing carbon monoxide poisoning is a headache, maybe confusion, dizziness, nausea. As those uh, symptoms progress, maybe even to uh, uh, comatose. Mm -hmm. How about people warming up their cars then? Should they do it inside their garage? If it's an attached garage, they could do it, but you have to be uh, careful, uh, you know, that, that you either have the door open, uh, your garage door open, not the one to your house, and that's the main concern. You're going to ha have migration of that carbon monoxide back into your house. So naturally, if you were to pull the car out, that would be the most safe way to do it. The concern with that is don't pull it right in front of the intake for your furnace. Right. <laughs> now you're just going to pull the carbon monoxide back into your house. So. Right. Yep, uh, in an unattached garage, you certainly want to make sure that you leave the doors open as well so you don't walk into a carbon monoxide rich environment when you go to get into your car. All right. And what about space heaters? Because it's really cold. Some people put them right next to the bed. Yes. They might have a blanket on top of it, keep it nice and toasty mm -hmm. warm. One of the Not first rules idea. with a space heater is A, you turn that off before you go to bed, or really when you leave the room. But you should never put anything over the top of those. They're not meant to dry your mittens or your gloves or your hunting socks. They're, they're meant to be uh, used with a clear space of about three feet around them. You really want to keep them away from anything that's combustible. You oh, don't want to. Three wanna, feet? Yep. Three I don't feet. think I've ever seen a space hater with three feet no. around it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. How about furnaces? So furnaces, we should definitely, you need to have those serviced just the way that uh, the manufacturer would suggest. Serviced and inspected, same thing as like a chimney for a fireplace. You usually annually is, is how often you'd want to do something like that. And really that serves two functions. It, sure, it ensures that the combustion inside it is, is complete enough to not give you a, a whole bunch of carbon monoxide throughout your house. But it's also going to make it more efficient. You're going to get better heating from it. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you. Well, we appreciate you coming out and talking about this. We want one more thing. Christmas trees, they need to go, right? Yes, they do. You have to make sure you water it every day to make sure that it's not going to become a fire hazard. But yes, you have to part ways with that. And luckily for White Bear Lake residents, the first two full weeks in January, they'll pick it up from the street corner from you. So get rid of those. Yep. All right. I'm sure you have a lot of great memories of hosting the show with Ron uh, over the years, Tracy. Uh, too many to count. We've taped nearly 200 episodes and reported on thousands of stories. In our next segment, we talk about some of our favorite moments. And Ron shares his thoughts as he says goodbye. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Tracy Minarchek. And I'm Ron Hawkins. Thanks for joining us for the first edition of Lake Area Beat. Hey, what's going on? Oakdale had a fire show, Maplewood had a police show, so I thought, let's do something different. Let's do a police and fire show. So I put the proposal together, and I had to meet with Chief Badness and Chief Miller and Mark Sather, who was the city manager at the time, and put this together, and I remember Tim said, well, Ron's here during the day. He can just do it. <laughs> <laughs> you were very quiet back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Look at me now. I know. <laughs> Maybe we need to entertain. Huh? Mm, what do you think? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. No. I remember being at Mary's place for a Christmas uh, 
safety segment. That was fun. That was different. cheesy. That was <laughs> <laughs> and I think I was like laying on the couch with a blanket. Yeah, <laughs> you were having <laughs> symptoms of the flu, and I came in, Mr. Firefighter. Oh yeah, it's uh, reading just over 100 parts per million. <laughs> I think of Eric Foss. We did a story yes. on him. Yep, I look back at, uh, I've looked back at that show and that's, yeah, that's a, that was a good show and, mm -hmm. and he was a good, a good kid. I guess I call him a kid. But, I know, but he was like yeah. our age almost. Right, yeah. You know, <laughs> Maybe 10 years younger, I think. Yeah, very special, mm -hmm. special guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was nice to have him on the show and he's since passed, so looking at the show, now, uh, you know, that's definitely a good memory. I always look forward to doing the show and never didn't and always thought it was fun from, I don't know, we must have had, I don't remember, but we must have had production meetings before we even started. But so I always look ago. forward to it, yeah. <laughs> I always just look forward to it. You know, the whole group, just very talented and, you know, when you see the show, there's just a lot of things that you can take for granted that, that shouldn't be taken for granted. Well, it was a lot of fun kind of thinking about to the past where we first started from and kind of where we've we've taken the show to so that was nice to do a kind of review if you will show with him right and talk about all the history that we've had like here that. and all the shows and episodes and fun things that we've done yeah you know ron will be missed i've known ron for over 20 years i used to work with ron back in the health east days and played softball with ron so i know ron well and and he's a great guy and he he'll guy. be missed on the show yeah People want their roads cleared when the winter hits, but the Public Works Department needs your help. Here is a reminder of how you can do that. job. I've been doing it now 12 years. Yeah. I wouldn't do anything else but this. Bars and trash cans, that's our that's our biggest enemy right now. Be nice if people would actually when they see snow is on the ground or snow is in the forecast make sure they do everything in their, in their power to get the cars off the roads in the driveways uh, we don't want to do damage to parked cars here we're going around one right now so you can see it makes it kind of difficult uh, and then same thing with the trash cans trash cans make uh, make it kind of a, like an obstacle course for us. Uh, it slows us down quite a bit, and it actually, uh, you know, the level of service goes down when we have all these trash cans and parked cars out the road as obstacles to try to go around. We don't want to knock them over. It just makes uh, oop, uh, more work for the, even the garbage hauler when he comes out. I know it'd probably make a difficult job for you. You gotta go in and around. Or... It's, it's basically for emergency vehicles, they can get on the road safely. Also, your postal service, they won't deliver your mail if, you, if they can't get close enough to your mailbox. Next week, they're talking uh, warm-up coming up, and so what's gonna happen is things are gonna start melting, and uh, if we're not able to get all the way up to the curb, you're going to start seeing puddles and ice, is, ice forming up in front of people's houses. And it just cre creates a lot of hassle for the, uh, for the residents. To me, it's kind of peaceful, you know, when you're out there plowing and, and it's, 
you know, early in the morning, no traffic, the snow might be falling lightly, and it's just something uh, real peaceful about plowing. We've had a couple of winter events and I suspect that we'll have some more, so here's some good reminders for folks. Coming up after the break, first impressions can be deceiving. We'll find out who had everyone fooled when we come back. From the entire crew of Lake Area Beat, we want to thank Ron Hawkins for his many years of helping to spread information and good news to our viewers. It's been a wonderful ride, and as we close out the show, here's what past and present crew members have to say to you, Ron. And we'd like to wish you all a very happy 2018, and make sure to check us out in the next edition of Lake Area Beat. Thanks for watching. I didn't know Ron very well. He was very, very quiet. Uh, I thought he was very professional and when we talked about doing the show together I thought uh, that it was going to be maybe weird because he was very quiet but it turned out different. My first impression of Ron he was very, very stiff. So it's time for us to take another quick break, uh, but when we return, Area Kids recently had some visitors who made an unusual entrance in the school's backyard. My first impression of Ron was that he was extremely shy, very quiet. In fact, I remember thinking, how is he going to host this show? But I quickly found out that was not the case. He is neither shy nor quiet. Well, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think that the, the show will have more fun, more energy, just, uh, well, I don't know, that's, that's my hope for the show. I don't know that I heard anything about Ron before I met him, before I went on a shoot with, uh, with these guys on Lake Area Beat, uh, Mary and Nick, and I... I did notice immediately that I really liked Ron. Ron in three words. Charitable, genuine, interesting. Class clown clown. Good hearted. A hard worker. And interesting. My favorite story has got to be his biography. It's kind of a longer format piece. and. It's a chance uh, that we just really got to sit down with him and kind of find out who he is as a person. Um, what's interesting is that he's actually half Mexican, which, I mean, come on. Ron, Mexican, no way. They did a series of challenges, but the one I love the most is that Ron ate a bowl of jalapenos. Um, pretty eagerly, I might add. He picked the little one. Mm. That's not bad. Get a little bit hotter. Mm -hmm. I want to kind of taste myself. Because it time. actually is getting hot. <laughs> Ron, what's up, my man? Nick here, uh, sitting here in my little editing bay uh, where I edit all your stories. Um, one in particular was uh, one of my favorites is your MS-150 ride uh, back in 2015, 16. And, uh, it was an honor to see you travel the trails of Minnesota to raise awareness and money for the MS-150. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks, and uh, it's been an honor and a privilege. Thanks, Ron. Ron's got a side to him that 
I think most people don't know until they really get to know him. It's just been consistently fun. Um, he's a goofball. He makes everything a lot of fun. Um, we're always laughing. There hasn't been one episode where we're not laughing to the point where we have to stop rolling. I love snack. <laughs> <laughs> He will take one for the team, he'll go the extra mile, he'll do whatever you, whatever you ask of him, really. I will miss Ron's gentle wisdom and his general disposition on life and his character on Lake Area Beat, but that's not really a character, that's who he is and he's just um, a good, person to know. It's going to be, we'll have a friendship still, but it'll be different. It won't be that we'll see each other all the time. Definitely just his personality and the quirkiness about him that really makes the show shine. Ron's a one of a kind. Despite some of the things that can and do go wrong, Ron always has just such a bright, fun energy. He always makes taping fun. He always makes stories fun. and. Um, I'm definitely gonna miss that about Ron. And, and when I say I'm gonna miss Ron, I sincerely mean I will miss him. I'd also like to add that if there are anybody the ages of 14 to 20. Filters need to be changed, uh, you know, roughly about every one. Hey, thanks for calling me back. Yeah, I was just wondering. Uh... You know, one of the things I like to do is, is to have a goal of some big event, whether it's a running event or, or something like that. And I think that's much more of an incentive to, to get me out the door. want to present this to you Ron and um, I have a little note on the back but just wanted to thank you for all the charity work that you've done for our charity and that you've done for the city of White Bear Lake. Being on the ambulance uh, is uh, I think one of the best parts of being on the job and uh, I really like uh, interacting personally with people. We also talk about the men and women in our community who have served bravely, uh, who have, <laughs> our nation has served. One nation our... under God. Everybody give me a wave real quick. Tracy. I think she, I think she forgot about me. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Ron Hawkins. And I'm Tracy Minarchek. Make sure to join us again next month for another edition of Lake Area Beat.